Hi guys. I'm delighted to see you again on the channel. So, once again welcome back to our travel guides and travel documentaries. In this video we are going to show you the places we visited and what we like the most in this mega city that is Cairo. We think anyone coming to Cairo, besides the pyramids and the museums, should come with an interest to learn about the people. There are so many cultures, east to west, north to south, everyone with a different set of principles and beliefs, even accents. So, what's special about Cairo? Cairo is chaotic, charming, and alive in every sense of the words. With over 21 million residents and tens of thousands of travelers present at any one time, this thriving metropolis has much to offer people of any taste, interest, and desire. The Egyptian capital is bursting with culture and all of Egypt's history is there for viewing for travelers. From the famous Sphinx and Pyramids of Giza to the Great Egyptian Museum which allows you to see famous historical artifacts as well as shopping at the Khan al-Khalili Bazaar, you can't forget the fabulous and well-preserved medieval Islamic city and Coptic sites in Old Cairo. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to experiencing the history and culture of Egypt. And for a start, there's nothing better than a walk through the Giza pyramids. A visit to the Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx is definitely a must. Travel to Egypt without visiting the Pyramids of Giza is never complete. The Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx is the only seven monuments of the ancient world that remains until today and it represents the quintessential of ancient Egyptian civilization. The Pyramids of Giza is the most iconic image of Egypt and one of the premier attractions of the world, making it a spot that you wouldn't want to miss. You may travel around the pyramids by foot or by riding on horses or camels, however, you would have to be cautious as the whole area is amazingly up and down. It is possible to take a self-guided tour of the pyramids or to travel with a tour the guide who can provide in-depth information as you proceed through the site. The Giza pyramids are made up of a number of pyramids including the Pyramid of Khafra, which is almost as large as the Great Pyramid of Khufu which is just under 140 meters in height. It is possible to venture inside some of the pyramids too. But, not all will have internal access available due to safety reasons. If you have claustrophobia problems, we do not recommend visiting the interior of the pyramid. Don't confuse what you see in this camera, which is almost nothing, with the details of images and hieroglyphics that you see in the tombs of the Valley of the Kings in Luxor. Watch our other videos about Egypt to understand what we are saying. For those interested in Islamic architecture and history, try going to Islamic Cairo, El Gamaleya district, or Khan El Khalili. There you will see numerous buildings and some mosques and see how buildings and houses were built in the Islamic era of Egypt. Khan El Khalili is another major attraction in Cairo, and more specifically Islamic Cairo. The chaos and the crowd of the bazaar are simply fascinating and you will find many merchants selling spices, gold, perfume, and Egyptian handcraft. There are so many perfume merchants that you will find that the smell of different kinds of perfumes is kind of overwhelming. Vendors around the bazaar will try their very best to pursue you to go into their shops and lure you to buy something. Keep it in mind that you would have to bargain a lot as Egyptian merchants have a notorious reputation of charging tourists at high or even unreasonable prices, try to compare prices across shops before purchasing something to ensure you are buying something at a fair price. Egyptian Museum is also a place that tourists shouldn't miss. Located in the Midden Tahrir area, it is the home of the world's premier and most extensive collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts. The museum was founded in 1857 by French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette and moved to its current home, in the distinctive powder pink mansion in downtown Cairo, in 1897. The absolutely staggering collection of antiquities displayed in Cairo's Egyptian Museum makes it one of the world's great museums. You would need a lifetime to properly see everything on show. It owns over 120,000 artifacts and many of them are on display, 
The most attractive displays in the museum are arguably the mummies, the royal mummy room displays about nine mummies and one of the nine is the newly discovered mummy of Queen Hatshepsut. Aside from the mummies, the museum also displays a great variety of important artifacts of ancient Egyptian history and a great number of treasures of King Tutankhamun. Not all items are on display, with much of it stored away safely out of view of the public. But there is more than enough on display to satisfy even the keenest Egypt history buff. Also of great interest are the items from the tombs of some of the pharaohs including Thutmosis III and Thutmosis IV and Hatshepsut. These are located on the first floor of the museum. Of course, the famous gold mask of Tutankhamun is a standout display and one of the most recognizable history pieces on the planet. The tomb, discovered by Howard Carter in the Valley of the Kings in 1922, contained the largest and richest assemblage of grave goods ever found intact in an Egyptian tomb. Highlights include Tutankhamun's death mask and sarcophagi, Room 3, the Pharaoh's Lion Throne, Room 35, and his fascinating wardrobe collection, Room 9. The easiest way to arrive here is to take the Cairo Metro to Sadat Station, on Midden Tahrir, and follow the exit signs to the museum. In a commanding location at the foot of the Mokhatam Hills, Cairo Citadel was built by Saladin in 1176, the Muslim Caliph who defeated the Crusaders. The Citadel of Cairo is a medieval Islamic era fortification and, it is strategically placed, overlooking the city of Cairo. The original structure he laid out has long disappeared except for the eastern outer walls, but a legacy of rulers has made their own additions here. It was the center of the Egyptian government until Khadiva Ismail moved his palace to the new Abdin Palace in 1860. The Mosque of Muhammad Ali is the most famous monument and the main reason for visiting. Nicknamed the Alabaster Mosque, its white stone and tall, disproportionately slender minarets are one of Cairo's great landmarks. The other big reason to come up here is the views across the city, head to the Gohara Terrace for the best panorama in town. Just to the northeast of the Muhammad Ali Mosque is the El Nasir Mosque, built in 1318-35 by Muhammad El Nasir. A collection of rather half-hearted museums, the Police Museum, National Military Museum, and Carriage Museum, take up some of the other buildings on site and are more worthwhile viewing for the architecture of the actual buildings rather than the exhibits themselves. You can walk to the Citadel area from Babzuela, if you're feeling energetic, by heading along Kayamiya Street. The walk takes about 30 minutes. Next, let's take a walk to Coptic site. This small church-filled cluster of twisty laneways lies within the walls of Old Babylon, where the Roman Emperor Trajan first built a fortress along the Nile. Parts of the Roman towers still preside over the main street. The Coptic Museum here contains a wealth of information on Egypt's early Christian period and is home to one of Egypt's finest collections of Coptic art. Next door, the 9th century Hanging Church contains some beautiful examples of Coptic architecture. Founded in the 4th century, the church was originally built over the Roman gate towers, hence the name, and was substantially rebuilt during the 9th century. For many Christian travelers though, the real highlight of a visit to this district is the Church of Street Sergius and Bacchus, where local legend says the Virgin Mary, Baby Jesus, and family sheltered during King Herod's massacre of male babies. Farther into the quarter, you come to the Ben Ezra Synagogue, which is said to be built near the spot where the baby Moses was found in the reeds. Just outside the quarter, you can also visit the Mosque of Amr ibn Alas, the first mosque built in Egypt. Coptic Cairo is easiest reached by taking the Cairo Metro to Mar Gurgis Station. Before we finish, we wanted to give you a hint about the restaurant that worked as our kitchen in Cairo. It was love at first sight, for the food, 
the service, the atmosphere, it was very good. Enjoy your time sitting outside on a patio, listening to cool music, and tasting your delicious food. Oldish was our first restaurant in Cairo and I have to say the best one. Ah, yes, it's near Tahrir Square, very convenient. Must go place in Cairo, no doubt. And last but not least, make sure you enjoy the city of Cairo and the culture of Egypt from the food, to the history to the friendly people there's so much to uncover here and anything is possible if you travel with an open mind and good attitude. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy that video, let me know your thought down below if you have any other tips for Cairo. Have a great day I'll see you later. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Stay healthy and see you soon.